It's my favorite time of the day. It's my favorite time of the day. Getting an understanding that makes my day. It's my so I can know how to live this life and know how to make choices that make sense. I believe you me, I have made plenty of choices that did not make sense. So I hope that you join me today. I welcome everybody, everybody on earth. I want every, pass this video, do what you got to do. Let the people know that somebody is getting ready to read 2 Samuel chapter 17. 2 Samuel chapter 17, and this is my favorite time of the day. And I hope I get somebody to join me. All right, in chapter 16, before we get into chapter 17, the last thing that we had is there was a, um, a council, counseling or advice given to Absalom and what to do about pursuing his daddy so he can kill him, so he can become king. And he got it from Ahithophel. Ahithophel told him the very simple instructions. He said, your daddy is tired and he's weak. And I want to get out tonight and go out and get your daddy tonight. While I can know I can get him and I don't want nobody but him. And I'm going to bring everybody back home. Only somebody I want to kill is David. I want to take 12,000 soldiers with me. And we're going to come back and we're going to take the whole, we're, we're bringing the whole city. We are going to bring the whole city back. We just want to kill this one man. What does that remind you of? I want to kill everybody, but I want to bring back this one man. I mean, I want to bring back this one group of people, but I want to kill David. And that's the same thing they did to Jesus said. You know, what's up with all these people dying? Let's just kill this one man and then they, all, of us, all of us can live in peace. They killed that one man and it has drawn the whole world toward this guy. Whether you like him or not, that one man that they killed drew the whole world to him. Still talking about him 2020 years later. 2021 years later. So Ahithophel wanted to do the same thing to David. David is a shadow of things to come. David, God used David as a shadow of things to come. We are to learn from this. There are some things that David did that God does not want us to do. Then Hushai came and told David, said, no, I got a little bit more. You know, if you ever want to shut somebody down and let's say Ahithophel's idea was short, precise, to the point, let's get the job done. And it was, and the Bible said that his, his advice was good. He said, but I sent uh, Hushai, and all Hushai did when he opened his mouth and said, I don't think it's good. If somebody else is praising somebody else, and then they said, what do you think about it? You can almost squash what they thought when you said, oh, I don't think that would that'd be a good idea. So you squash their idea, and then you start telling your idea, and, and Hushai's idea was, it looked like it was scattered, but it was all God's plan. And then Absalom said, oh, I like Hushai's idea. And then um, they, would care, they were getting ready to carry out Hushai's idea. 
more details happened. Somebody saw somebody tell him the secret of what they were getting ready to do. Absalom found out, pursued those people that did. They didn't find them. The word got to David. David got up and did what he had to do to save himself and the people or save the people and himself. And then Ahithophel. Ahithophel went home and said, you know what? Uh, you know what? I'm about to go into the 17th chapter. Father, we thank you right now. Because <laughs> the idea of what happened, Lord, where am I? Am I supposed to be in the 18th chapter or the 17th chapter? I get confused because I study one night and then I read the next night. And I'm trying to see, did I study 17? No. I'm right. I almost went into the whole chapter of, uh, where I'm going today. Because the story flows like that. All right, the last thing that happened here was in the council of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was a man. Oh, they looked at uh, Ahithophel. I almost told the story about what I'm getting ready to tell you now. Because it flows just like that. You almost run into the next section without even realizing how, how God had this thing just smoothly run into the other one. Just smoothly connect to the other one, rather. So uh, Ahithophel, I almost told a story. All right, well, anyway, Ahithophel had a lot of influence. He's like somebody like today, you think of somebody very rich. And you think that you can take God's word and one person can change how we say what God. One person can say, God, I pray to the universe. And then here, the whole world get influenced by that person's uh, way of saying, I pray, to, I, you know, I talk to the universe. And then you got people saying, oh, Hitherfield had influence like that. Very well known. Uh, he was one of those guys that if he spoke, you could pretty much believe that it had validity to it. He was a thinker. But one thing, he was not. He was and is not. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that we'll get an understanding. And thank you for how easy your word is and how it flows. And may we not only hear what you said, but get to know these people because they are people that are still alive today, perhaps with a different name. Since there's nothing new under the sun, these people be people's behavior is still the same. So that we'll know what to do when we come into these people. We have to see the light of your word. So we'll know how to walk the path with the light on and don't make wrong turns when you have given us somebody to learn from. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the simplicity of this word. And Father, I thank you that I ask you that whenever the schools come back open or if they come back open, if we have other time, if we, if we have some, if you have time in this world that you're going to give us in order to get it together, may this word be as simple as it is, that it's put in every school. Father, I pray that our children that don't know you, I pray that, the, and I pray for all children, but I especially pray for my people that we will see the simplicity of your word and change our behaviors, our neighborhoods, our community, our cities, our government, just change because they see a changed people in people of color. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for allowing me to be a person of color. Oh, I love people, period. But I just know that I'm a part of a group that has been dismissed, rejected. I know how it feels, but I'm glad to be a part of your word. And I get a chance to understand that you have not left me out. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your work. Thank you for all that you've done. May our churches rise up and see that we are nothing to to just come together just to be entertained. But we are invited to the table too to sit and learn and be able to speak to anybody, any king, any government. May we be used as Daniel. May we be used as Joseph. May we be used as Mary. May we be used as Deborah. May we be used as Abraham. May, be, may we be used as anybody you see fit to carry this word. May we be used as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for making us a part of this, your plan. In Jesus' name, thank you for forgiving me. And thank you for giving me the right 
to be forgiven. You gave, you forgave me. Now teach me how to forgive. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, we are in, uh, I almost went into the 17th chapter. Damn, I don't want to waste no more time on that. But anyway, let's get straight into the word. And I cannot see. Um, I can see, but I can't. it's just hard. Moreover, Ahithophel, all right, let me give you a little background about Ahithophel, because we need to know who this person is. Ahithophel was David's uh, senior advisor, his counselor. This is who David, I think later on we're going to find out that David called him friend. Ahithophel, as by some commentators, is, I don't know for sure, but anyway, they, in my study, they said this is Bathsheba's granddad. So we think that he's an older man. Uh, Ahithophel is a, a person that you would consider that you're not wasting your time if you ask his advice. The word says that people looked at Ahithophel, he had the mouth, as the word says, and and the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired of the oracles of God. In other words, you would think that this guy came straight out of God's heart to speak because his words were precise. He didn't use a lot of fatty words or he was not a filibuster. He said whatever he had to say. And if you listen and carried it out, it, it, it perhaps would become whatever... Um, he said it would be, but he is not God. And what he did was he was David's counselor. This is what the word calls him now. He did not call him David's friend. He called him his counselor. When David heard that this guy had sided up with his son, David told God not to let that guy, he said, don't let, that word, don't let the words of Ahithophel succeed, for lack of a better word. Don't let what he says succeed and accomplish those things that are against your word. And let's see if God, well, we already know he heard. He hears. He, he, let's go see what the word says. All right. Moreover, Ahithophel said unto Absalom. He said, Absalom, let me now choose our 12,000 men. We get rid, I'm tired. I'm ready, I'm ready to go and get rid of David. This is Ahithophel. Imagine your counselor won't kill you. And then you're going to side with his son. I want to get rid of you. Somebody said he was doing that because of what David did to Ab, to uh, Bathsheba. Now that, that might have some validity to it, but I don't think that you have to have a cause to kill a person. Some people just hate you because they do. I can't give credit to that because I didn't see it in the word. But as my study, people put it together. But then we're going to find out another guy named Ahithophel. So we got to make sure that we don't get all, you know, so smart about what people think. And let's just stick with what the word says. All we know is Ahithophel is giving advice to uh, Absalom. I want to kill your daddy. Why do people wake up every morning and want to think about I want to kill somebody? Because you got the wrong spirit. I pray that every announcement. If anybody's doing anything, and I, I pray that your life, as my granddaughter said one day, I pray that if you get up this morning to take somebody else's life, that that thing boomerang me and come back and all we know is you gone. That's what my granddaughter said. And I almost prayed. I said, wait a minute, baby, you praying that God kill somebody? She said, yeah, because they want to kill somebody. Don't wake up this morning with a plot to hurt anybody. Because I'm asking God to let the counsel of what you're receiving from the enemy fail. You either change your mind and do what's right, or God just take you out of sight. And well, I got to pray it like that because there's some foolishness in this earth. And this word got to get out. We ain't got time for all this to be paying attention to all this nonsense. Let's stay with the word of God and and let's let's see what God, let's get along. That's one number one. May we get along. But if you don't want to get along, may you be gone. That's what my granddaughter said, and I just happened to agree with her because that's a simple that came out of her six-year-old mouth. She, that girl was so scared until she prayed, and she said, God, kill them, that those that want to hurt people. I'm just saying. Oh, you shouldn't be teaching her that. Um, well, I don't know. I told her. 
I don't know if I taught her that. I know one thing. She spoke it. And whatever was happening that day, it ceased. All I'm saying is don't go after people. If you can't change your mind and, and live and do the right thing, may you be removed from hurting people. However God wants to get it done, stop hurting people. Moreover, Ahithophel said unto Absalom, let me now choose out 12,000 men and I will arise and pursue after David this night. Tonight. I, I'm going to tell you why he wanted to get him tonight. Because David and him had just left the house, running away from the, um, running in fear away from Absalom. Just left the house. I'm tired. I, we running. I got all these people with me. Yes, I got soldiers, but I'm tired and, and, um, and, 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 and Ahithophel was a smart guy. He said, this is the best time to get him. Tonight, he said, I will arise and pursue after David this night. I want to kill him tonight. And I will come upon him while he is weary and weak handed. And will make him afraid. I want to get up on David while he, this is your friend talking. To you. This is your counselor talking. I want to get on her while she's tired and sleepy and weak and make him afraid. But I always remember, if this was my blackboard back here, I'm going to be telling Ahithophel, I'm going to tell the teacher on you, I'm going to write your name on the board because I heard what you said. And the teacher said, put his name on the board. If he talk while I'm gone, put a name on the board. And when you get back, I'm going to deal with you. So if you are plotting to hurt somebody, Ahithophel, like him, your name is on the board. And we're going to see what the teacher going to do. And he said, I will come upon him while he's weary and weak. And this is what happened to the children of Israel when they were leaving Egypt. And uh, I think it was the Ammonites came up behind them weak, tired people. And they had to hold Moses' hands up because as long as the hand was up, the war was being won. And so they had to prop it up. But God said, I'm going to get you. You came out the people when they were weak. That's not a fair fight. Your name on the board too, Ammonites. Oh, I'm rhyming today. <laughs> you got to be a weak man to get, try to kill somebody when they're down. You got to be a weak man. Father, I, I just right now, I pray against everybody who try to attack people when they're not looking. You know how to do it. You, I know God know how to wipe it out. If, I'm telling you, I know God knows how to wipe that out. I know that he knows how to wipe it out. And this guy said, I'm going to make David scared and all the people that are with him shall flee. Everybody around going to run. And I am going to smite the king only. I don't want nobody but Jesus. I just want him. And you can let Barabbas go free. That's his friend talking. This is the member of the church talking. I want to get him. The church fighting within the church. And a clever man with a loud voice and got understanding of how to get people's influence by his speaking is trying to kill a man that God called. It's the church talking. This is not. This is not the division of the world. This is the church. This is God selected, chosen, taught by a specific class. And one of the students of the class said, "I want to go kill this other student." For what? Why is Absalom? There is no reason. God gave no reason, not at all, why Absalom want to kill his dad. Now we can assume, but God never said that's why. Because people don't have to have a reason other than the fact I just want what you got and get out of my way. You didn't do anything to me, but I want your spot. And I'm, I'm going to get rid of you. And I got a, a bunch of ignorant people following up behind me to help me get rid of you. And at the end of the day, what did I do wrong? What did David do wrong? And if he did do anything wrong, God will judge him. 
But because of David doing wrong, we have this behavior of this son because God told him, said, your kids going to be, they're going to be wild. They're going to be out of control. But I'm going to still be God. I want to talk about that a little bit more when I go back to that. But anyway, third verse. Ahithophel said, David's friend who want to kill him, counselor, and I will bring back all the people unto you. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lose one. Ahithophel is speaking as God. I'm going to get delivered. Oh, I'm gonna deliver, like Paul said when they was on that ship, on that boat trying to get to that place, and that thing busted wide open. He said, I lost none. They all got back. Jesus said, Lord, I pray for all of them. I got all of them except the son of perdition, except Judah, because he didn't want to come. It ain't because I put him out. It's because he did what he had to do himself, acting without me. And Ahithophel said, he told that boy, he said, I am going to bring every last one of them back. And I will smite the king only. I just want to kill one man. And I will bring back all the people unto you. Absalom, I'm going to bring them back to you. The man whom you seek is as if all return. He said, when I bring back everybody, I want you to know that the one that you seek is going to be dead. This is a member of the church talking about killing God's anointed. God's appointed. God's heart. Like his. He said, I will return. And when you see me come back with all the people, know that David is dead. Your daddy. I'm going to kill your daddy, boy. How you going to have a conversation with a child talking about his daddy and his friend? Your child listening to your friend talk about killing you. What did Jesus say? I came to my own and they want to kill me. And succeeded in what they thought. It wasn't my enemy that did that to me. My friend. The one that I ate with and one said, pass me the butter. Jesus said, I fed you. I healed you. And I can't find one. I, even the 12 people that I sat with and taught. He said, all y'all gonna scatter. This is the church talking. What, is, what are we to learn from this? Don't do this. Jesus said, I settled it all. Don't repeat this. But as sure as you don't know that it happened, history will repeat itself. He said, that's why the word must be heard and heard. When we say faith, we are talking about the word of God. Must It comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. Your baby need to hear it in the morning. Your baby need to hear it in the noonday. He need to hear it when he go to school. He need to hear, they need to hear the word all the time to get that word inside of you so you will not repeat what these foolish people did. I will bring back all the people unto you. The man whom you seek is of, is as if all return. Once you see all of us come back, you know David did. So all the people shall be in peace. He said, we're going to live without him. It's the counsel of an old man telling a young man, I just want to kill your daddy and, uh, and all is going to live in peace. This is not God talking. God used this guy and he put him on display so that we can say, if we ever see it like this again, it ain't going to work. God is the attorney that represents the people. And I'm saying it like that so that you can go see all the cases he already won. He said, now, if you step back in doing what they got, and I already won that case telling you that if you do it like they do, you're not going to win. That's why we need to know what the word says. And the saying that was told to Absalom pleased him. And the saying pleased Absalom well. Oh, I like what you just said. You're going to kill my daddy. All the people going to come back and bow down to me. I'm going to be king. Oh, I like the sound of that. That's what Absalom said, David's son. And the elders of Israel said, I think that is a good idea. The whole church, that not the whole church, not right here. A lot of the church, because some of the folk follow David. I think that's a good idea. How you get together and sit down and talk about killing somebody? 
And it's not necessarily taking the blood out of them. They're talking about killing the, the, the character of that person. How do, and, and you, and you, we better wake up. I looked up this morning, this word cult. You know what a cult is? A cult is. It's when you got a body of believers, a, a body of people, people who believe the same thing. And if you don't come up, be a part of the way I do it, then your belief is wrong. You better get in the word and believe it. We, we better be a body of believers that have the culture of the word of God being spoken. Because I, I, I the army of churches ain't big enough for this. If you don't hear the word of God spoken, this word is supposed to go in the white house, the black house, the, the yellow house, the red house. The, God's word sounds the same every church and every house that he's spoken about in it. You ain't going to never say, you know, my pastor. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Reference, refer, find the word. Do not put anybody in place of the word. Read it for yourself and say, the word said. Not my pastor said, or my son said, or a Brenda said. Don't put my name in front of you. He said, don't have no other God before me. Oh, he ain't no God. I was just telling you what he said. Ah, 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 ah. Know what the word said. And stop feeling like, you know, people just need to be encouraged. People just need to, well, then let God do it. Let God encourage them. Not you. I see people all online. You know, the Lord, of the, I just know that the Lord, you ain't got not one Bible open and you encouraging people. No, you got to, you, you in trouble. Say it like that. Better go in here and read this book. You encourage the people to do what? To not read the word. That's what you encourage the people to do when you say something. You know, I just I just want to call you to encourage me. You ain't encouraging me. Stop calling me. Give me what the word says and give it to me rightly divided. And stay with it long. I don't want to hear no scripture. Tell me the story. Every chapter tells a story. Then said Absalom, and half the church don't know this. I pray that the, I pray, whatever God got to do, I pray that we get educated. Oh, that's, that ain't what the word edified means, educated. Jesus came down and educated, and he taught the people. You didn't see Jesus running around with no organ and jumping up and down. He taught the people. You ain't see Moses on 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 the uh, uh, mountain for forty days and forty nights, and they were just having. A, you know where they found the music at? Down there, down there, where uh, on the ground where Aaron had built that calf, and they they danced until they got out of their clothes and naked. The difference is it being educated and taking all these titles down. Lord, let me not say nothing that, that I, let me say, this is, if you want me to say it, you know you can use, you can use me to say it. We better read this book. Like it or not, we got to read. Well, you got to do more than read. Well, you got to read. Jesus said, I'm in a book. This whole book is written about me, whole book. He said, back from Moses all the way up to now. This book written about me. And go back to it. Okay, see what happened. So Absalom and the elders said, oh, that's a good idea. We're going to kill daddy tonight. But God is playing. God said, I got this now. Then said Absalom. Wait a minute. Hold up. Call Husha. Somebody call her. Husha! Uh, uh, Absalom want to see you. I'm going to call you David. Absalom said, come on in there, Husha. You know, Ahithophel just told us we're going to kill daddy tonight. Why he weak and tired. What you think? And then Absalom called now Husha the archite also. And let us hear likewise what he says. We got to get, we got to find somebody else. We got to get two people to tell us what to do. And when Husha was come to Absalom, Absalom spake unto him, saying, Ahithophel, 
has spoken after this manner. Well, you know, he wanted to kill Dad and they while we and all the people gonna come back to me and they're gonna bow down to me and I'm gonna be the king. What you think about that? There's God behind all this. Shall we do after his saying? If not, speak thou. What do you think we ought to do? A uh, 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 husha? Husha. And Hushai said unto Absalom, the counsel that Ahithophel has given is not good at this time. I ain't saying that it, it don't work. I'm just talking about not, not, mm, not good at this time. Mm, don't do it that way. Now, Ahithophel sitting over there looking at, looking at Hushai like this. But he been open his mouth. Oh, his shot head look like mine. Older, I guess. Well, he was older. And he got this old young boy coming in here. And Hushai said unto Absalom, the counsel that Ahithophel has given us is not good at this time. That's what the Hushai said. No, nah, don't, nah, don't do that. No, this ain't the right time for that. <laughs> Four said Hushai, thou knowest your daddy and his men. You know your daddy, boy. You think your daddy tired? Mm -mm. That they be mighty men and they be chafed. I mean, they upset in their mind. Their minds ain't doing nothing but right now. They be, ooh, they sharp in the head. They ready to get you, boy. As a bear robbed her way up in the field. He said, boy, your daddy so upset until if you come at him now like this and knowing that he's a mighty man, he got mighty men with him, you'll be like a boy. Don't go there. Somebody done robbed that, the whips of that bear. And your father's a man of war. It will not stay with the people. He said, I ain't going to sleep with the people. I know better than to go to sleep in the folks. I, mm -mm. Behold, he is hid now in some pit. Your daddy, I'm hid in the pit. Or in some other place. And it will come to pass when some of them be overthrown at the first. He said, when he get word that some of them people got killed. Mm, that whosoever hear it would say, there's slaughter among the people that follow Absalom. Now God set up Hushai to go in there and confuse the counsel of Ahithophel. Now what is God doing? Reverse them out. I'm on verse 9. David told Hushai to go over there and hush. Keep your name. Go over there and hush. That's me saying it because it make it easy for me to learn. He said just get in there and find out what my boy going to do. I got two little boys that I want you to tell them what to do. They're going to run back to me with their young legs and tell me what my next move got to be. David is a warrior. I got to send some spies up in there. And you're going to be my spy. Now you go in there and confuse what a hit the field. Because I know he's going to give him some advice that's going to be clear, precise, and point blank done. You go in there and you talk and you buy as much time as you can buy. Don't let that boy succeed to do what uh, uh, Hithophel is saying. Because if he does it, it's going to work. And so Hushai is entertaining. And you can say, well, did God use, let him use him? He told a lie. He fudging that thing, ain't he? <laughs> I asked the Lord that. I said, Lord, I said, wait a minute, hold on. I'm trying to understand what you're saying. I said, this guy is not telling the truth. And I said... He, he ain't telling the truth. And, and you see it. You know, God told me, don't go there. Oh! <laughs> he said, I do what y'all do. I told the truth of what happened. Don't go there, Brenda. Go look at your license. I look, Lord, you ain't got to talk. I, I get it, I get it. No, 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 no. Go, what's the weight on your license? <laughs> well, you know, Lord, that's back in the... Oh. All I'm saying is God said, read the word. And don't start looking at, ooh, God, God, <coughs> you just got to, to, to miss, you know, God said, I've told the truth. David said it, and he did it, and I tell the truth. Don't You ain't got time to be trying to figure out, because I, I don't have no problem putting the rug. I, God, please, stick with the word. All of y'all who said, oh, I just can't believe that Abraham told him that that was his sister. He said he did. <laughs> and it wasn't true. 
Oh, God tells the truth. He tells the truth when we don't tell the truth. He tells the truth that we didn't tell the truth. That word. I just want to take it back to Walmart. It don't work for me. God said, I'm going to write it down what you said now. I'm just saying. I'm down back to the to the understanding of the spy that was telling Hushai. Hushai was telling uh, Absalom. He said, boy, your dad is a warrior and them folk ain't going to be sleeping together with your daddy. Your dad are here in the pit and they mad as I don't know what. But anyway, we just try God. Well, watch what God said about this whole thing. He said, night verse, behold, he is hid now in some pit or in some other place. And it will come to pass when some of them be overthrown at the first that whosoever hears it will say, there is a slaughter among the people that follow Absalom. He said, when the word get out, the David going to find that some of his people talking about Absalom and kill some of them folk. Now, mind you, that's not what Ahithophel said. We going when they weak and they tired. Ain't going to be none of that. But Hush has, <laughs> he got this thing going. And he also, that is valid, valiant, strong, whose heart is in the heart of a lion, who has the heart of a lion, as a lion, shall utterly melt. All oh, them big time folk going, ooh, and he also that is valiant or strong, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, shall utterly melt. For all Israel know that your father is a mighty man, and they which be with him are valiant men and strong men. Therefore, I counsel that all Israel be generally gathered unto him. He said, do what you need to do. It ain't going to work with what Ahith Ahithophel said. When they know that David and then your folk going to come up on David, they can't have a day. They gonna their hearts gonna melt. He said, but that's what you need to do right here. We're gonna forget that stuff that Hitherville said. <laughs> Therefore, I counsel you. This is my counsel right here. This is what I think. See, if we do it like he said, that I, you know, I'm just letting you know. Therefore, I say to you, all I therefore I counsel that all you to be generally gathered together. I need all of us to get together. See, Ahithophel said he wanted to go kill David himself and bring him back to you. I don't think it ought to work like that. Therefore, I counsel you that all yours will be generally gathered unto you, start from Dan even to Bathsheba, and line up like the sand that is by the sea for a multitude, and that you go to battle in your own person. You lead that war, boy. You get out there and go fight. Let it be, let it be known that you did it. That's Hush I said that. So shall we come up on him? We're going to get up on David in some place where he shall be found. I don't know where he's going to be found, but some place where he shall be found. And we will light up on him as the dew fall on the ground. We don't even know how he got there. We're going to get him because we don't know how dew get on the ground. All we know is it's there. We're going to light up on David. He ain't going to even know what hit him. This David spy talking. And we will light upon him as the dew fall on the ground, and on him, and on all the, and on all the men are with him. There shall be not one left be left so much as one. When we get through with him, and you do it the way I said now, got to do it the way I said now. You be the leader, and you lead this army. Not a hit the field. A hit the field took one sentence and said everything. That boy just talking. <laughs> All right. Moreover, he said, I ain't done yet. Hold on. I got, to, I, got to, I got to get my other spies, get some time to go buy some time to tell David what you up to, boy, because that thing on Hitherfield said was smart. <laughs> he said, moreover, if he be gotten into the city, suppose he run to the city, David going to run to the city. Guess what we going to do to the city? Then shall all Israel bring ropes to the city, and we will draw it into, we going to pull it, we going to pull all, if he get to the city, he tried to hide. We're going to pull all them buildings down by ropes. We're going to take them ropes. And we're going to draw it into the river until there be not one small stone found there. We're going to flatten that place out. That's just in case you go to the city. I'm just saying. We got to have a plan. Now, uh, 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 Hush Eyes is playing. It's all over the place. It's as if this guy, a Ahithophel said, go to sleep, kill the king, bring the people. Hush, I said, we got to get there. He's going to tell you, hey, your daddy going to be feeling like this. He might be in a pill. Well, he's going to be somewhere. But then, you know, you need to be leading with all the people. that, And he's doing all that talk. You're buying the time. 
but he also getting in mind of Absalom. He said, if he runs to the city, we're going to tear the city down. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, and show you how confused people are. Talk. They love talk. And then guess what Absalom said, heard? You mean to say, I'm going to be, I'm going to get the credit. He didn't say that, but you can tell by the attitude. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, the council of Husha, the archite, is better than the council of Ahithophel. <laughs> that boy said that confusion is better than what that man said that was simple. And you get what the word says. The council of Husha, the archite, is better than the council of Ahithophel. For the Lord had appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel. He said the good counsel. He called what Ahithophel good. So that guy was thinking. He said, but I, the Lord, have appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel. Why? To the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. He said that stuff that Ahithophel was saying, that was... That was if it was, it was good. He said, but I did this and told him to choose Husha because I want to get Absalom. Let me tell y'all something right here. When David sinned, and this, and we look at it as when the church sins, I'm going to say David, but I'm always talking about us. I'm talking about me, us, us. We, people. When David sinned with Bathsheba, being the king, anointed of God, God said, boy, you got him. I would have given you more wives if that's what you wanted. I would have given you anything you want. You took that one man's wife, and then you turn around, around and killed that guy. He said, you caused the people to blaspheme my name. I'm good to you. But when you think that what you did did not have consequences. I got to use it. Because I know how many people I know that's coming after you. I want them to understand the deadliness passed down by your behavior to your own children. That thing hurt the heart of God so much that David did until now the first baby that he had by Bathsheba died. And now this son is, the sword is in the house. The Absalom, the, the, one of the best looking men God ever described in the word of God. One of them. Good influence, politician looking. When the church, when we do those wicked things, and God said, if you want a wife, I'll give you one. Why are you sleeping with that little girl? I got plans for you. If you do this, the same thing. And then you wonder why people say you just like your daddy. We say it, but the truth is, it's, it's truth in it. There is, that is truth. You can't, just like I speak English. And I did not teach my sons. I got six children, six boys, six men. When they were young, I didn't teach them how to speak English. All I did was spoke it. And they grew up speaking what I spoke. But if you ever want to get a man or a woman off track, don't live right. You don't have to speak. All you got to do is just do it. It'll be in them just as strong and not even that. You, this boy is so miscombobulated or discombobulated or it's so out of order. Because what David was not paying attention to is what he was doing that was affecting the people that was watching him. But what David did differently after having been rebuked by God, God said, I just can't, I'm not going to let you die. It's important that I tell the world about your behavior. Because I don't want them to think that I'm going to let them get by if they do the same thing. We got to be careful what we do. All of this unnecessary stuff, even though God has forgiven David, David is still king, but God said, I got to use you. But the good thing about David, he understood the consequences of his, his what he did, that deadly choice that he made. 
but he did not forget God. He didn't turn his back on God, knowing that I already know my daddy, God already told me this was going to happen, but God, I didn't know it was going to be like this. We never know how in the world could Abraham sleep with Hagar. And if not four, five thousand years before Jesus, I think it was a thousand years before uh, Jesus that this story happened. And then it was a few thousand years before, we just talked about a long time ago. How in the world are we still dealing with the sins of Abraham's choice when he left, he laid with that woman? The only way we could put a stop to sin, Jesus put a stop to it. But you cannot take the word of God and say, Jesus put a stop to it and you still sinning. You'll get the same consequences as if he never put a stop to it. We don't escape consequences of sin because we say we saved. We could be forgiven and we can do it over. But don't sin and don't practice sin because it's, it, it wastes, it's just a waste of consumer's time. It's, a, it's just not business. You got a business. Why are you why why are you stealing from your company? That's a waste of time. You that's gonna soon, even though they might let it, it, it. All I'm saying is sin does this, and you never know how that thing gonna play out. You gambling with life when you just take a chance. Gee, we can't do it. And if you start, stop as soon as you get it. Run like Joseph. Because there will be temptations. But the Lord has given us a way of escape out of all of it. Every sin I ever committed, I hate it. Every time, every time I think about it, I didn't know this word of God. I hate the time. I'm 61 years old and I'm just not reading this book in detail. My life would have been totally different. I can't blame it on nobody. I mean, I did have instructions. To be, and, and, and I know that it offends, but it, if it does offend, I wrote the same thing. I played with the same kids. I played, didn't do this, all because the cult or the culture, they told me this was God. So I brought my children about that. You touched the ball, I whooped them kids. Because that's what I was told. And I'm saying we got to be careful that we're not doing what David has already went through. And he said, y'all come on, listen to me. Listen to my testimony. Go back what Jesus said and learn from these people. Because just as surely if you thought when they put them nails in my hand that I didn't mean, I, I, it was just my turn. I didn't mean to go jump in front of my, 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 my father, David. I didn't mean to jump in front of him so you could think you don't need to go. Go see what happened to him. This is a mess. We do. We have no idea the germs that sins carry. We have no idea. You don't know how many people that you may have laid with that's dead based on what you gave them and you still living. God said no. It's a waste of time. This is the king talking. And this is the this guy is God's heartbeat. There were, and God talks about this guy, nobody had another heart because he didn't, you know, like if you get a whooping, now you mad. Okay, you, you get fired and you get fired and now you mad at the company. You mad, you want to go. That, David said, I, I, that's pretty much what happened to me. I got caught, but I didn't get mad. Why? Because I took responsibility for what I did. I just didn't know it was going to go this crazy. And the only way, and we can't stop sinning just because we want to. The only thing that can keep you, you got to come to the Father's table every day. Jesus said, give me this today, my daily bread. That's the only thing that can keep us from sinning. You got to walk in there with that word. And then when you walk in there and when the sin come upon you, you'll say, oh, I can't do that. It'd be like a raincoat that would just repel him against. I got too much word in there. I can't do that. neglect this word, you're going to go into sin. And that sin got germs that you would never be able to, 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 to get them. You can't get a vaccine for the sins that we got to return to God. Only somebody can clean this mess up is God.
And we got to get in this word. We got to sound like intelligent people. Then said, Hush out to Zadok. Okay, okay, good. And he want he loved the counsel of, 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 of Hushai. And he took that. And then all the people switched and went with Hushai. Well, that's how confused people are. One man said this, oh, I like that. And another man said, oh, I like that. Verse uh, 16. Now, therefore, sin quickly. And tell David, saying, Lodge not. Oh, and I missed the verse. 15. Then said Hushai to Zadok. These are other spies that they are priests, though. Then said Hushai to Zadok and Abathar. These are the guys that brought the Ark of the Covenant. When they left and they were running with David, they had the Ark of the Covenant. These two priests, Zadok and Abathar. David said this. Take the word back to his place. It, 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 take, take the Ark of the Covenant back to, the, to Jerusalem. When David said that, something got in my spirit like, God, that's good. The word don't run. Oh, man. The word don't run. Take it back. If anything, I'm coming back to it. It's going to be right where it's supposed to be. And Abathar and Zadok being priests where the only somebody can handle that word took them back to Jerusalem. Right there where Absalom said, I own this place. And the word said, not if I'm here. Hey! Woo, woo, woo! That make you want to holler right there. That make me want to holler. <laughs> he said, take that word back. And so these two guys took it back, Abathar and Zadok. And then Hush asked, say, hey, Abba, Zara, I got a word for you. Thus and thus, he told him what happened. You know, I told him a long story. Ahithophel told him a short story that's going to work, but God's going to use my story. <laughs> thus and thus, Ahithophel counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and thus have I counseled. Ahithophel told him his side of the story, I told him mine. They told mine. Now I'll tell you what to do. Now that boy sent quickly. Go tell your boy. Your son and your both of them boys, both of, the, both of those priests had sons. So go tell them young legs to run tell David this. Now therefore, sin quickly and tell David, saying, Lodge not this night in the plains. And tell him, get up. Don't, don't lay there. Get up. Uh, don't stay in the night. Don't stay all night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily hurry up Passover, lest the king be swallowed up and all the people that are with him. Now I told him what to do. But just in case, tell David get up out of there. <laughs> mm. Now, Jonathan, these, these are young boys that ran. And Ahamazah stayed in Enrogel. They didn't go all the way to town. I'll check this. It just get good and good. For they may not be seen to come into the city. They said, don't go into the Y'all stay away from the city, y'all young boys. And a wench went and told them. And they went and told King David. And a wench went and told them, and they went and told King David. Now, that part right there, it seems as the lady, the wench, somebody would call, don't call her a wench. They're like, I can't be calling that lady that. <laughs> King David said, the wench went and told them, and they went and told King David. So she told them the word that was going on, and then they said, okay, we're going to go tell King David. Nevertheless, A lad saw him. He saw them telling it. Nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom. I said, Absalom, everybody ain't on your side. I just saw them two boys. I saw that winch over there. I mean, he said, what you call that one? I saw that winch over there. <laughs> she told a boy what you said. Nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom, but they went both of them away quickly. And came to a man's house in Bahurim, which had a well in his court, whether they went down. So these two boys found out that they knew something that Absalom had found out that they knew when they went to this house that had a well and they went in that empty pit, that empty well. And the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth. Look at God. The woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and spread ground. In other words, go look back. Oh, I got to plant my corn right here. Now, this is God's plan to hide these boys. I got to plant my corn. And she threw that cover over that thing and then threw that dirt on there. Guess who told it? A hey, little boy. So be careful. 
We think that somebody, somebody always watching. You got to do right. Even though this was a part of God's plan, but that woman that hid them boys, said, y'all get on down after that pit. I'm going to throw some over y'all and just be quiet now. They knew how to be quiet. And the woman took a spread covering over the well's mouth and spread the ground corn thereon, and, and the thing was not known. Verse, I'm on verse 20. You, you remember that time? I know some of y'all may remember the time they were looking for this guy from the Middle East. I don't know if it was Bin Laden or uh, Hussan. I was reading this scripture right here, out of context. And I said, the guy they looking for, now I, ain't tell, I didn't tell anybody. If I did, I don't remember. But I remember reading the scripture during that time. I said, that man is right up under their nose. Because when you're hiding, your enemy is not far. And we just be searching. Ahithophel went far from David. These boys were not far from what they were looking for. And what they, you know what they found? That guy was at this time, I can't remember which one it was. You know where he was? When I saw him, and that's when I was didn't know how to read the word like I do now. They saw him on the ground in the middle of the city. They had dug some kind of dugout right there. He was right there. He lost his mind because of the sound of the cars and the people and and he didn't know what was going on. When he came out, he was like, ooh, 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 ooh. his name was on the board. He got caught. Absalom name on the board. Ahithophel name on the board. Hush, your name not on the board, Miss. Anyway, I'm just saying, if your name on the board, you got to, it's, you're going to get some consequences. And the, woman, and the woman name is not on the board either. And the woman took and spread a covering over the whale's mouth and spread ground corn thereon, and the thing was not known. <clears throat> and when Absalom servant, let me tell you, oh, let me stop saying this right here. I didn't want to say this. When I was talking about being close to you, if you're close to young ladies and you're a married woman, you got single friends coming to your house, don't be afraid to tell them, girl, come, don't come to your house dressed like that. In fact, don't even come to my house. I don't want, this, I don't want to set nothing up because your name will get on the board. I got six sons. I had to do that. I had friends came over and they dressed in the castle. You can't come to my house like that. This is my house. Why you can't come to the house? Because I deal with men. And I don't play games. We can still be friends, but you got to put some clothes on. You can walk around. And then you look better than me too. <laughs> anyway. But I'm still the one. Anyway, anyway, whatever. I'm just saying to those of you who are married, be careful that you ain't run around with somebody who's influencing the wrong spirit in your house. Put some clothes on when you go going to people's house. And some people don't mean no harm because this, in these days, people dress any kind of way. But at least let them know in your house, you can't dress like that in my house because it's, it's an interruption. I'm just saying. Like, I beat you down at the mall. Then you still need some clothes on. And the woman took and spread a covering over the whale's mouth. And she planted some corn and, and, and threw some corn thereon, and, and the thing was not known. And when Absalom's servant came to the woman, uh oh, they found out. The boy told the boy came and told him. Absalom said, I'm going to get him. Get them. And when Absalom's servants came to the woman to the house, they said, Where is Ahamazel and Jonathan? Where the boys at? And the woman said to them, They be gone over the brook. They gone. They gone over the brook. They gone. She said, the word said, they be gone over the brook of water. They be gone. So God got some Mississippians in the word. They broke, they broke a verb. <laughs> Whatever. I know I do. They be gone over the brook of water. And when they had sought and could not find them, what is it? I can't see them. What is it? They, they, when they sought and could not find them, they returned back to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after, their, after they were departed that they came up out of the well. The boys came up out of their well and went and told King David. King David, you got to get up out of here. And said unto David, arise and pass quickly over the water. They said exactly what they had been told. Get up quick. Don't, let, don't hinder. Don't, don't delay. Get up now. Run. Get over the water. Get over Jordan. And it came to pass after they were departed that they came up out of the well and went and told King David and said unto David, rise and pass quickly over the water for thus has Ahithophel counseled against you. Now some kind of way um, uh, uh, um, Hushai told him something but they still know 
that what Hush I said, that's what they're saying. This was what Hush I said. He said, get him, get out of here. Hush I said what he said, but, but I'm telling you right now, you need to be gone. Then David arose, and David followed instructions from these little boys. Somebody can tell you something that young. Trying to save your life. Somebody can tell you something that don't have a title. Trying to save your life. But you know, now you ain't no bishop. You ain't no pastor. You can't tell me nothing. A little boy can tell you something. Then David arose and all the people that were with him, and they passed over Jordan. By the morning light, there lacked not one of them that was not gone over Jordan. David had everybody. Everybody that he went, not one lack, not a five-year-old, a two-year-old, a six-month-old, an eighty-year-old, a nine, none of them. He God got that protection because you stuck with the right man. And when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, uh-oh, his name on the board, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house. Ahithophel said, I'm going home. To, the, to his city and put his whole house, put his household in order. In other words, I got a diary over there. Over there. I've been writing some stuff down. I need to get rid of that. I need to bank. Let me call the bank till the bank. I said, how, how I want my uh, will to be transferred and uh, transpired. And I, went, I got to call these people and tell them I'm sorry for that. And I don't know if he did all that. <laughs> yeah, verse 23. And he got home to his house. To his city, the word says, and put his household in order, clean up behind himself, and hanged himself and died. He hanged himself and died. He was just like Adolf Hitler. You do all that wrong, and then you go somewhere and try to kill yourself. You do, you get all that, all that junk that you do, and then you go out and you can't heal, you can't help. And hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulchre of his father, dead. Was he mad because they ain't they, they paying me no attention? He said, no. I ain't mad because of that. He, they should have did what I said, dude, but they ain't why I'm mad. I know this is a done deal. That word, the Ark of the Covenant is in here. They didn't follow my instructions. I'm a smart man. I might well go because if David get back, I'm just going to go and get out of here. He killed himself. So the clerk curtain closes about that. One name off the board. Absalom name on the board. Still on there. And I don't know about that little old lad. But anyway, we're going to talk about Absalom. I don't even know if that lad going to come back up. But probably so. Anybody that follows him the wrong, eventually you're going to get caught too. That's why you better know who you follow. Because it ain't all about... Absalom. It's about the folk that falling up behind Absalom. You better find out whether or not these folk being led by the word of God. Then David came to Mahamanon. Don't get me because I can't pronounce all these words. Then David is, now the, the camera's on David now. And Absalom passed over Jordan. He right there behind him. He and all the men of Israel with him. I'm going to kill my dad. That's crazy. This is the church. And Absalom made Amasa captain of the host instead of Joab. Joab was David's commander, chief of the army. Which Amasa was named man's, which Amasa was a man's son whose name was Ithra, an Israelite that went in to Abigail, the daughter of Nahath, sister to Zariah, Joab's mother. God gave you all the details. And it's not the same Abigail. That David married. It's another girl named uh, um, Abigail. Her dad' her name was Nahash, and Nahash was the guy. It's a lot of a lot of history in this. Nahash is the guy that had a son that came after David after cutting a men's private areas off of their robe and cutting their beard, and he had a boy named Hanan. So Nahash is dead. Dad is di is dead. Nahash is dead. Anyway, that's just more history. I don't want to get you all, all confused because I know it's kind of hard to remember all of that. Anyway, this this guy was good to David during that time. And the bad son that they had, had is dead. And he got a good son. And they're not Israelite. These are people of the world. God got people of the world that understand, David, you're a good man. 
So this is what that boy did. Nay has other son that's good. Not the one that was low down that did Davis. Anyway, there's too much I can't say that much. We'll have to have a question and answer period if that's what you need to need, need to know. Because all of this is stories that's up on another story that, that you get these names and what they did. 26th verse. So this guy named Nahash son, his son that's still alive, a good guy, one of the, one of the non-children of Israel. Um, where was I? So Israel and Absalom pitched in the land of Gilead. They tired. So Israel and Absalom pitched in the land of Gilead. So that's where Absalom is. And it came to pass when David was come to Mahanaim, that Shobah, Shobi, the son of Nahash, of Robah, Rabbah, of the children of Amnon, and, the, and Micah, the son of Amniel, of Lodabah, and Barzilla, the Giladite of Rogilam. Now, these three guys got together. God got somebody always ready to prepare you. And look at what they did. Now, Absalom is still for a minute. He pitched. That means he, they had to take a break. You can't fight all the time. You got to take a break at some time. David also got to a city and they had to take a break. But the three guys that God is going to use, that's not necessarily, I do know one of them that's not an Israelite, but he saw David in need. And this is what they did. Brought beds and basins somewhere to wash your feet and your hands. And an earthen vessel, something that you can use to, once you use the restroom after you dig a hole and brought you somewhere that you can cover your uh, matter. He said, me give you something to take care of your body on the outside. Then they brought wheat. These are ungodly people. Well, at least one of them was. And barley. And flour. And parched corn and beans and lentils and parched pulse and honey. Look at God. And butter and sheep and cheese of kind for David. And for the people that were with him. These guys got together and said, let's send out some food. So they could eat. For they said, these people are hungry. And weary. And they are thirsty. And there's no mall around because they are in the wilderness. That's the last chapter of 29. Last verse of uh Chapter 17, verse 29. I'm getting ready to eat out of chapter 18. I have no clue to what's going on in the next chapter. I've read it out of context, but now I'm putting it back into place where I know how God wants it to flow. So whose name is on the board? So you have to read the next chapter to understand who's, who's name on the board? Absalom. God said, I had all of this right here set up because I'm going to get that boy. Get him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Thank you for joining me, and you have not wasted your time. And I am so glad to see y'all. Talk to y'all later. Hey, Elaine, talk to y'all later. Bye.